President Biden says he wants the full support of Congress in his effort to rebuild Baltimore's economic lifeline. Federal and state officials, including Maryland Governor Wes Moore, warned it is going to be a long road to recover from the loss. The state has already received $60 million in emergency relief funding. This week, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg said rebuilding the bridge will not be quick or easy or cheap. Natalie Brand is outside the White House. Natalie, good morning. Good morning, Jeff. And President Biden says he plans to visit Baltimore next week. So far, as you mentioned, the administration has released that $60 million in emergency relief funds, but that's considered just a down payment for what will be a long and costly rebuild. It is not going to be days or weeks or months. This is going to take time. Engineers say it could take years to rebuild the Francis Scott Key Bridge. President Biden says he intends for the federal government to pay for it. So it could be 100 percent federally covered. That's correct. Maryland Senator Chris Van Hollen and his colleagues are working on legislation to make sure that happens. He says the cost could exceed a billion dollars. This is a project of national significance. The port has a national impact. This bridge is part of the interstate system. Uh, and so the way we've done this in the past is the countries come together, put aside politics, uh, and help support cities and states that are in need. And also making sure that the federal government gets credited for any funds that come in because of liability from the ship owners or others. The Department of Labor is also looking at options to help the estimated 15,000 workers directly employed by the Port of Baltimore. When there's no ships here, no cargo, there's no work. So it, it, it affects us greatly. We know you're there. We're going to find a way to get you back to work. In the meantime, companies this week, including top U.S. automakers, began rerouting shipments from one of the East Coast's busiest ports, which last year saw more than $80 billion in imports and exports. The impact is big right away, and it will grow over time. Now, the White House says its Supply Chain Disruption Task Force formed following the COVID-19 pandemic met twice this week to talk about impacts from the port's closure, especially given its normally high volume of automobiles, agriculture equipment, and coal. They're trying to minimize any issues and believe overall the disruptions will be smaller than those caused by the pandemic. Dana. All right, Natalie, thank you.